podcast. Do you have all the questions? I do. Camera, hey guys. How are you? I did my hair for this Periscope live. I'm just kidding. Um, do you want to say hi? Hi. Oh, well, that was so sweet, all of our followers. You should show them the size of my ankles. Right? We, I'm sorry for being a few minutes late. We just traveled back from the beautiful city of Stockholm. If you haven't gone, I would highly re recommend that you go. Sorry, this is kind of like the Blair Witch Project. Let me put the phone down. Um, okay, so, um, I tweeted this week, uh, painting's going great. What's up, girls? Hey. Um, I have a lot of really awesome questions that, um, all of you guys wrote into dotsandbetty1 at gmail.com. Thank you for doing that. Uh, I first, I wanted to just kind of say that, um, Motive Nation is kind of going through a few changes in the next few weeks. So bear with us, please be patient. Um, but Motive Nation, as far as all the uh, motivational stuff, will be the same. So um, anyway, we will get to the questions. We had a lot of really good questions, actually. Um, this one... I read earlier. Um, this is from Jessica Freegalt. Again, I'm sorry for pronunciation. I'm just going to say that right now. Hi from England. Hi. Um, okay, so the first question was, do you follow any other sports than soccer? If so, who who would you say is your favorite team or player? So I'm kind of boring in that sense. There was a period in time when I was really young, I went through a hardcore Edmonton Oilers uh, phase where all I wanted to do was watch Wayne Gretzky and then he got traded to New York and everything changed after that. Uh, I also was really obsessed with the Chicago Bulls when I was young, when Michael Jordan was there. Do I have to say anything else, Scotty Pippen? Um, so I, yeah, really keen on those guys. Um, okay. Yes, thank you. More questions are coming in. Thank you, everybody. Um, what do the green hearts mean on Periscope in the corner? Does anybody know? Anyway. Um, so I have a question here from Kareen Giorki. Again, I'm sorry about pronunciation. Um, Greg scale the way. Yes, I second that. Um, someone's asked, someone's asking, I can't make decisions for myself. I tend to depend on other people to help make me make decisions. What advice can you give me to help, um, be my own self basically? So I also ask for a lot of advice, probably too much. Um, but, um, I think generally you know, you've got to trust your gut and your instincts. And I think for me, uh, something that I've learned is, um, and I'm still learning is really hard is to not care what other people think. Um, so, uh, and I think, you know, you kind of know in your heart, um, what the right answer is and just to have the courage to follow that. Cause at the end of the day, some people might laugh at you might, you know, like there's always that risk. Um, but I think, um, if you do something that's not true to yourself, then you'll end up, um, you'll, f you won't feel good about yourself. I don't know. That was kind of a depressing answer. Uh, okay. More, um, coming on here. Um, so a lot of people have been asking me about my tattoo. So, um, I'll give you the little close up here. Still I rise. And this is Muhammad Ali, but, um, so, my favorite series of art ever is Andy Warhol's Muhammad Ali's. So, uh, it is because I think Muhammad Ali is incredible. I have a, um, a little audio recording that I uh, talked about last Periscope, I think, with Wesley Knight, uh, basically about what motivates me every single day. And Muhammad Ali's voice is on there, and he's like, I'm the greatest of all time. And anyway, I could... I could do a million quotes for you by Muhammad Ali, but um, his unwavering belief in himself is just, I, I think it's awesome. So that's part of the reason he's on there. And of course, Andy Warhol 
um, totally rocks. I just went to Stockholm and saw this incredible exhibit and actually got to understand him as an artist, which was so cool. I've been talking to Ella about it. Um, she's probably rolling her eyes in the other room because I can't stop talking about it. But his whole concept was to make copies of copies of copies and I won't bore you on here but he's really a genius and the last thing is Still I Rise which is uh, a poem by Maya Angelou if you ever have the chance to read it it is awesome okay um interesting okay how do you deal with rejection this is from Paris Les Caris Sorry, again, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm... Yeah, so I got married. Um, I don't, I get denied by my wife every day. I'm always asking her for a kiss and she always says no, or I try to hold her hand. <laughs> she said all three days I'm in trouble. She says all three days, there in Katrina will Anyway, um, how do you deal with rejection? That's a good question, actually. Um, I think, what I've learned over my many years is um, that, you know, a lot of times, you know, that like cheesy line with people like, it's not you, it's me. But a lot of times that's really the way it is. Like people just don't uh, match up. The best advice my father ever gave me about um, relationships was basically um, you have to compliment one another. And a lot of times people are not with people that compliment one another and they end up kind of dragging each other apart and it ends up being kind of a destructive relationship, which I've been in myself. So I think, um, I think Ella always tell her all the time she is my biggest compliment, but I think you have to find someone who does that. And, um, you know, rejection is, is, is part of it. Um, but if you stay true to yourself and you'll end up really loving someone more. And I think too, like one thing I've really learned, um, is, loving yourself is the most important thing. Um, I was talking once with one of my sports psychs actually, and she was like, okay, imagine how you treat a partner, how you'd want to treat them. Like you give them so much love and respect. Um, and then she's like, now would you do that to yourself? And I was like, that's the weirdest question. But um, it was really a, a good way to frame the way that we uh, don't really put that much compassion and love into ourselves, which is crazy because if we can't do that for ourselves, how can we do that for anybody else? So, okay, this is about body image. This is good. Uh, okay, which was your first step to eating, to facing your eating disorder? This is from Gabriela Pereira. Um, great question. Um, yeah, and this is basically about nutrition. How do you get the most out of nutrition? So nutrition is so incredibly important. Whether you're an athlete or not, uh, I think it helps your mood. It helps whether you feel tired or not. Um, I try to stay away from processed foods, although I love processed meats. I just love them, but please try and stay away from them. Um, but I think, okay, back to the eating disorder, the serious part. Um, I think for me, my, my mom actually, we had like a very serious conversation and she kind of sat me down and I was really passionate about soccer and, and she basically was like, you can't, um, have this eating lifestyle and play soccer. You, they will not match at one point you will run out and it's not going to work for you anymore. So at some point you've got to make a decision whether you want to be an athlete, uh, or you want to be a rack of bones. And I mean, summarizing. Um, and so that kind of made it clear for me. That didn't mean I didn't struggle with it. I still struggle with, um, you know, eating guilt free. Um, but I think, um, again, going back to like the self compassion thing, it's, it's really true and loving your body and, and loving yourself. And I think too, I have a very strict diet and I think that's important as an athlete, but at the same time, having cheat days and, um, believing you deserve, um, you know, those days. And again, it's still hard, but, um, I really love food. So, um, you know, I think it's important to yeah try everything in life. Real Madrid just scored as I just got that. Okay. Um, okay. We're going to do two more questions. Ah, oh, there's so many good ones. Um, actually, 
Um, this is one of the first ones I got uh, like a week ago. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry everybody for the delay. Uh, yes, okay. This is from Shivani Kumar. Again, I'm sorry about pronunciation. Um, in the sports setting, there are many different types of captains and leaders. There are those who are quiet, quiet leaders like Sinky, Christine Sinclair. Uh, there are those who are more of the big moment, big speech, uh, whose infectious energy before a game. It's awesome. Um, all can be effective in their own right. All motivate their teams differently. Which one speaks to you most? And what type of leader do you self, do you see yourself as being most often since different groups are motivated in different ways? So I'm a lot of times that person, I often envision myself having these like really cool motivational speeches before we go out in the field. But what, I'm just going to close this. But when, what ends up generally happening is um, I get really emotional and then I just start crying. And that doesn't really motivate anybody. Um, like tears of joy, you know. So um, for me, um, I think I just try to be like a calm leader. I try to give information. All of a sudden, from California, hi. Uh, I try to be a, a calm leader. I try to direct the people in front of me. And I think a really good leader is someone who just tries to get the best out of everyone around them. And so I think as a goalkeeper, especially if there's goalkeepers listening to this, your tone of voice, and this is like for everything. I was just reading a, something in a, you know, a business book about um, good leaders. Like they watch the tone of their voice and the way they speak to people because everybody is very different. And so, um, you know, there's some people that I can like rip a new one on the field and they like respond right away and then they're like way better. And then there's some people who, um, you know, can't take yelling or can't take certain things. So I think it's very, very important the way you address um, people. And I think um, just kind of always being there. And as a goalkeeper, you're kind of like always there because you're the last man back. But um, I think that's important to have like that calm presence and kind of a voice that, you know, when people are under pressure, that you're there for them. Um, and what inspires me, I really, John Hervin does a, a really good job of like motivational spe speeches. Wow, I can't talk. Um, so he's totally awesome. So um, I don't know, any any kind of leader for me too. Like when Sinky scored, I mean, this Olympics, she was phenomenal. So I just think, uh, yeah, I think everything, as long as I know what people's intentions are and their hearts in the right place, then yeah. Oh, your tattoo looks amazing. Thanks. So sweet. Everyone's so positive. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna do one more question. Uh, Okay, this is from Emily Cosens. I think she just got engaged. I think that's the right person. Or I could be wrong, and I'm sorry if you're not. Um, and then if you're not, good luck finding love. So what tips do you have to get out of bed to do an early morning work workout? I struggle with this. That's a good question. I think, who doesn't struggle with this? Um, okay, so... Um, yeah, I love the mornings. I'm kind of a morning person. But um, I think for me, if I'm doing an early morning workout, I got to get music on like as soon as possible. There is actually, um, I listen to it, and I'm not kidding, like every day. There's this um, YouTube clip, and it's like a little... I don't think it's like four or five minutes in a motiv it's like a motivational clip and it, it starts by saying like dream and there's like Will Smith uh, clips and um, anyway, it's phenomenal. It talks about uh, kind of being the best version of you, not being a copycat, not following people, being the, like the best version of yourself. And that gets me like, and then I'm like, I can do anything. So um, I recommend that. And I'm, I'm looking for one more. I'm sorry. Yes, this is this is it. from Heather Patterson. Um, here it is. So, last one. Uh, if you hadn't been able to ever get back to soccer, and if you didn't have your art, where would you start to figure out what's next? 
So, um, this is a really, really good question. I think um, a lot of times, and this person in particular, but a lot, a lot of people, I think, um, sometimes run into things in their life that um, they can't control. They can get injured, they can get hurt, something can happen to them where they can't really continue doing uh, what they've been doing. So, um, yeah, I think for me, like I've always been very lucky. Um, where's Ella? Sorry, it's just me, guys. Um, I've always been really lucky that I've had a lot of passions, but I think um, I think there's also a lot of courage in finding what your passion is and also like going after it. Because, for example, me telling my parents that I wanted to be an artist or a professional soccer player when I was five years old, there was no professional women's soccer and um, artists generally don't make a really good living. So I think um, just having the guts to to explore different passions and um, and then go after them. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry, some of these comments are distracting. Um, yeah, and someone just said like, what if, what if the doctors say you can't play anymore? You know, like, um, I think, I think it's hard. I think, um, in life in general, like no matter what you do, if you're really passionate about one thing, I found that life balance makes you better at it. Um, I was just telling this to, um, Ella on the train ride home. Like, um, I'm trying to find all these different techniques of art. I'm like interested in Andy Warhol. I'm interested in, um, you know, I'm going to go see the Dalai Lama next, uh, next month. I cannot wait for it. And, um, there's just, um, so many opportunities out there to like just get a hold of and you never know what you're going to be passionate about unless you kind of go outside of your comfort zone and um, I think you know I was watching for example um, a chef's table on Netflix which is super awesome if you're a foodie even if you're not a foodie um, this guy talks about this French chef is like I need to take risks every single day and if I don't if I'm not taking risks then um, you know I'm not really living and um, I think that's true and risk doesn't mean you have to like go like cliff diving um you know it just means like maybe like reading a book that you never thought you would read or watching a documentary that kind of like sparks your attention or going to a new restaurant or trying a different way home on your bike or you know like it doesn't have to be massive um but it could be signing up for an art class or a, a cooking course or just something um something you've never done before uh, boop, boop, boop. Okay, so that concludes uh, this Periscope Live. We're going to do another one in two weeks. Um, oh, photography, yeah. Okay, so um, anyway, I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. I also want to thank all of you guys for uh, who's involved in the like the 30-day challenge. We're going to keep doing this. I'm really, really excited for next month. I'm not going to spoil it, though. I'm really bad at spoiling surprises, but... Um, we have like an awesome year lined up, um, I think. We have so many cool people that are so willing to be involved with this, but um, I just really wanna thank all the people who have been kind of um, giving their input on, you know, if I'm like putting an Instagram photo out there and like some people are kind of writing, you know, what they're going through in their 30 day challenges or even tweeting at me, like, it's really, really cool. Um, I feel really lucky that you guys are doing that. Um, and even the nominations page, we have so many cool stories that um, Ella's going to be in charge. She's going to start um, putting them on our website so you can see what kind of incredible people are surrounding all of us um, that probably don't get many shout outs. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I hope to hear from you again. Um, keep writing these questions in. Um, DodsonBetty1 at gmail.com is the place to go. This way is a little bit... Um, better and uh, from the bottom of my heart thank you for joining me tonight I wish I had more of a radio voice you know like the soft radios stations um, so I'll work on that for next time um, thank you very much see you guys next time